Welcome to the Humanity Leadership Podcast. My name is David Wheatley. We're here to talk leadership in small, bite-sized and practical chunks. Enjoy. So this is the seventh of our first Friday events, and it's the final one taken from our book, 50 Do's for Everyday Leadership. Here you'll hear my colleague Lance Satterthwaite talk about such things as uh, how do I continue to improve what my people and I are doing? Things like following through with personal commitments, asking people to take me, show me, asking open-ended questions, there are a number more that he's going to cover. Enjoy our conversation with Lance, and we pick him up while he's talking about August. Hey, but almost everybody I talk to is like, I can't believe it's August, right? And uh, I'm certainly in that camp as well. And I always think about August because it represents uh, really uh, a couple of things, at least for a lot of people, right? Schools starting, if you no longer have kids or don't have kids, you at least see some of the um, preparation educators are doing and you know the school buses uh, getting around, et cetera. And um, the other part I always think about is fall sports. Uh, and in particular, I think a lot about football because I love football. Um, so I bring that in today because today's topic around continuous improvement makes me you know, go back uh, about 30 years uh, to when I was in college and in August. So I was a student manager uh, for University of Michigan's football team. I worked with them uh, for a few years as a student. And the head coach at that time, his name was Gary Moeller, uh, he would give these rousing speeches, you know, early in the mornings uh, as football camp was starting. And he'd constantly and emphatically emphasize like, every day uh, we're gonna get better, right? Or we're gonna get worse. Every day we're gonna get better or worse. Today we're gonna make it a point to get better, right? I mean, that was really one of his mantras. And so it's in the spirit of those words, uh, Gary recently uh, passed away. So it's in the spirit of those words that I'm here uh, today to share some thoughts um, uh, on how we get better as individuals, as teams and as organizations. So with that in mind, uh, let me find an advanced slide. So I'm going to cover um, a number of strategies around this idea of continuous improvement. And where uh, I'm going to start is the idea of either A, you know, follow through with commitments expectations, or, and if you're a human energy fan, you know we don't use the word or very much, we use it, uh, or um, come back, uh, explain it, uh, take the pain and learn from it. Right. So if you truly want to create a learning environment, set the tone, uh, publicly own when you've dropped the ball, when you've made a mistake or otherwise didn't perform uh, to the expectations. Now I'm going to zoom way back. Uh, apparently it's nostalgia day. I'm going to go all the way back to uh, my first job out of college. And about a month into that job, um, I personally didn't follow a reporting process. I actually didn't know it was a part of the process. And I talked with my supervisor about it and it was a big enough deal that uh, she actually wrote me up. <laughs> and it's the only write-up I've ever had in my uh, career, but it was a big deal. And I thought uh, about that. It's like a part of me is super embarrassed and I, uh, you know, I don't wanna share that with the rest of my team. Uh, but at the time, I was, I think, 23. The rest of my teammates were 30 years and older, and I was trying to, like, prove myself. And I thought, um, you know, a, a part of proving myself is I want to have the, you know, the credibility and the answers. But a part of prove myself is having the humility to know when I'm not getting it right. And so I actually went back into our team meeting that following week, and I shared with them, hey, here's what's happened. Um, you know, I actually got written up as a result of this. Here's what I've learned from it. But a part of the reason I'm sharing it is in case you either didn't know that was a procedure to follow or a process to follow, we're all made aware of it right now to be better. And what was fascinating to me about it is I had several in, uh, of my team members come up to me that following week and just say how much they appreciated that piece of it, right? And I think there's two things as I think about that level of transparency and that level of vulnerability. One, I think it goes a really long way to earn people's respect, right? It's like, guess what? Uh, we're all humans and to be able to shine uh, moments when we didn't get it right uh, is actually okay. And two, it actually starts creating a safe enough environment where people 
follow that lead. And I can say, as I think about that team, um, it was a regular occurrence for people to come to team meetings and own, uh, you know, either areas where they need to improve or uh, of all that got dropped. And it wasn't in a blaming way. It was actually in a self-ownership way. John Maxwell, who's a uh, leadership author, uh, has a book titled Failing Forward, uh, Turning Mistakes into Stepping Stones Toward Success. So failing forward, uh, turning mistakes into stepping stones uh, toward success. And his point is, there's a difference between average people and achieving people, right? And one of those big differences is the way they perceive and the way they respond to failure. Right, and I think that's really around this piece. One of the ways people respond to failures is take, you know what, take the pain, learn from it, uh, and let's keep uh, failing forward. The second one uh, is asking people to take me and show me. So it is uh, difficult to improve unless we have a really good understanding of what's actually not working, why it's not working. And that may be, you know, the glitch in the computer program or a jam and conveyor belt or even a process that's a little bit clunky and inefficient. And so it's like, how do we actually get to deep understanding? And a part of that, my guess is you've heard the phrase, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. And it is true that, uh, that pictures are often quicker and better ways to convey information, to create understanding. To add to that saying, I would add an experience is worth a thousand pictures, right? So an experience is worth a thousand pictures. So imagine the type of acceleration we can get if we're actually going to see it for ourselves, right? Take me, show me, help me really understand that. There really is no substitute uh, for that firsthand knowledge. The next one around asking open-ended questions, and my guess is most people are familiar with the idea of open-ended questions are, hey, they can't be answered uh, with a yes or a no. We encourage people to really think about open-ended questions as powerful questions, right? And that idea is let's get people's wheels turning, right? So that they're learning, right? Let's get the wheels turning so that people are learning. And really that's the point behind a powerful question, right? And so whether it's getting people to think about and look at a, a different way or a different perspective, or maybe even helping people to think through and brainstorm alternatives or uh, you know, just think about what's going on in this situation, how we can improve. And so what that means is don't give fish, right? Don't come up uh, with the answers or the advice right away. Being able to really engage uh, your team and ask questions like, uh, what do you think is causing this, right? What recommendations do you have for fixing this? What would you do differently next time, right? Those are open-ended questions that uh, help get people's wheels turning and helping them uh, to learn to fish by themselves. The next one, being honest with yourself and know uh, what you do know and what you don't. And it really builds on this idea of, you know, I mentioned before vulnerability. And it is a key element uh, in, a, in any kind of learning environment, right? And, and where people are uh, actually continuously improving. Um, another way of being vulnerable sides like owning your mistakes is actually owning what you do and don't know, right? And <clears throat> at least some of the people I work with, they often think by admitting that it's like, hey, I don't know. Um, they actually feel like they're undermining their credibility. And again, I would offer the opposite of that is true. You can actually earn people's trust and credibility and create this great learning environment. Sometimes by simply saying, I don't know, I'm not sure, uh, versus actually making answers up. The next one, learn from others uh, and develop tricks that work for you. <clears throat> So we have two sayings at uh, Human Energy. Um, one is steal with pride. Uh, the other one is stand on the shoulders of giants. So both of them really support that idea of uh, let's not reinvent the wheel if we don't have to. So the idea of steal with pride, um, there's just a lot of smart, talented people out in the world, and they likely have encountered similar challenges or similar experiences as what you and your team are facing. Um, and so look at that, look what uh, other people are doing. When I teach our time management uh, training, 
always think about when we get to like systems and processes, I always think about, um, you know, I, I, and I encourage people, find one person in your organization that you actually would say manages their time well. Sit down with them have them walk you through their time management process. And it doesn't mean copy what they're doing because that may not work exactly for you, but at least steal with pride, right? Take tidbits from what they're doing and actually apply it uh, to you and your scenario. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton uh, had a famous statement <clears throat> around this idea of uh, the shoulders of giants. And he said, if I have seen further, it is uh, by standing on the shoulders of giants. So if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. And that uh, piece really is there are key thinkers, whether it's in your specific industry, and maybe it's a broader based knowledge as well. It's like actually build on what people have already learned, right? And what they have created along the way. That idea, don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, start actually from the current design of the wheel and then actually find ways to make it even better. I think in this way, uh, Google uh, or those sort of search engines can be our best friend. It's like on any topic, type it in and just see what's out there in the world and see if there are uh, shoulders worth standing on. The next piece, uh, tell people up front your need to understand task, job, process, and procedure. Um, you know, so I think often a common mindset is your knowledge is what equates to your competency. And I would say a better mindset of what equals competency is people's ability to get the job done, right? To have impact and uh, to achieve results. So in order to do that, you do have to have information to be successful. Uh, so get it early, right? Uh, getting that uh, information early uh, creates confidence. <clears throat> I often most see this uh, in people who are promoted into supervisor positions where Either A, uh, they don't know that position as well, or they've never done that particular job. And it's actually okay to tell one of your direct reports, like, hey, teach me about this position. I don't know as much as you do about it. Uh, not only does it show some interest, but it actually shows your desire to learn and help the organization out. Um, to my earlier point around don't fall into the trap of uh, covering up or I need to know everything. People will actually find that out uh, and it does damage your credibility. The next one, uh, be open and listen to feedback uh, from people. <clears throat> so we do this 360 at Human Energy, uh, you know, where people are uh, rated on a number of leadership competencies and that includes things like integrity and courage and um, service, et cetera, right? And it's like, what's the most important competency for a leader? And uh, I had this conversation once when I first joined Human Energy, I was probably a year into it. And uh, one of my uh, uh, colleagues uh, said, uh, we, were, we were talking about it. And I said, I think integrity is probably the most important thing for a leader, right? It's what builds trust, credibility, et cetera. And he said, that makes perfect sense. And I said, how about you? And he said, learning. I was like learning. I was like learning is like not even on my radar about, uh, you know, even a top 10 around uh, that from a leadership perspective. And his point was people who are rated high in learning, let's say you just took two people with the same amount of uh, competency, same amount of talents and skills. The person who has learning as a great competency, they actually, it's like, the sky's the limit. They will keep learning and growing throughout their career where this person gets uh, somewhat um, uh, stalled out at what their initial uh, uh, competency was, right? And their skill set. And it's just like, it just makes a lot of sense. That idea of, are you uh, in some of your team members, are you skilled in this idea of learning, which is being open to feedback, responsive to feedback, et cetera. And that, that actually can take somebody uh, much further in their career over the course of uh, their lifetime. The next piece is uh, contain problems and identify permanent fixes. Um, so uh, this past week, I facilitated a workshop with a group and we were talking about strategic thinking and uh, just identifying what that is and what that looks like. And we started with, hey, identify some common challenges. And they talked about things like supply chain issues or you know, a safety incident uh, and recordable incident. Uh, maybe underperforming employee, or even just like, hey, we have to onboard uh, uh, some employees, right? And so I asked them, it's like, 
what does a tactical thinker think about um, and the types of questions they ask versus a strategic thinker? And so just as a, for example, they went down the road of this safety incident, safety recordable, and a tactical thinker may ask things like, what do we do right now to help this particular person, right? And, and that's not a bad question because you have to take care of that immediate need or who do we need to report this to? But that's a lot different than the strategic thinker that thinks about things like, what is the root cause of this safety incident, right? Or uh, something like, how is it that we can actually make safety a super critical, important part of our culture, right? It's a different set of questions and thinking about the idea of uh, permanent fixes. So not Band-Aid fixes, but somebody who has a continuous improvement mindset really does look for what are some of the long-term solutions that prevent the problem from happening. <clears throat> Internally, uh, we use a tool called a CI log or continuous improvement log, and it's a shared document among our team. And so uh, it contains not just the error and what was the cause of the error and you know how would you do remedy or fix it in the immediate, but here's the one question uh, that it asks that I think is the right question, which is what do we need to do to make sure this never happens again? Right. So again, what do we need to do to make sure this never happens again? And I just think it's a powerful question, right? It's one of those questions to get people really thinking about uh, permanent fixes. The last uh, item I'm going to share with you is this idea of creating best practices that are standardized, document, and implemented. So recently, I was analyzing somebody's uh, 360, and you know they were getting a lot of kudos around their ability to be organized. And actually, a, a number of their raters wrote things like, "Hey, you're really awesome at documenting standard operating procedures or our key processes." And I mentioned this because there are probably some people uh, on your team in your organization that are naturally wired to do some of this, right? Some people may find this sort of work painstaking and difficult. Others may actually thrive at it. So the one thing I would say at this is find those that are good at this and really empower them to do that. And, uh, and that's the human energy. And, and there's a uh, opportunity for everybody to be a part of it. We even, as we onboard people, we ask people as a part of your onboarding, your job is to uh, continue to improve our onboarding process, right? You need to leave it better than you found it. So as we go through, we want you to improve our documentation. We want you to uh, find uh, times where, um, you know, it's like there's a gap here and help make us better. The last piece I'm going to say uh, on this is I work with uh, a client who their phrase is, don't let best get in the way of better. Right, so don't let best get in the way of better. And their point is around the idea of like, let's not be perfectionist. And I think it does tie into some of this piece on documentation, which is let's start somewhere. And actually, if you're a good learning team and a learning organization, you're gonna to continue to improve that as time goes on, right? So start somewhere when it comes to this idea of standardizing uh, and documenting. So uh, as you next go into your breakout rooms, I would like you to consider the question building on uh, what I shared. Um, how is it that you actually continue to improve what you and your people are doing? So thank you, Lance. Uh, that's the, as I said, the last of our uh, first seven episodes of the first Friday, uh, which uh, come from the 50 Do's for Everyday Leadership, our book that was published in 2007. Next month, we're going to move to some other topics, including delegation. I think that's the September event. Uh, but what Lance just covered there was to uh, follow through with personal commitments or come back, explain, take the pain and learn from it. Ask people, take me, show me. Ask open-ended questions. Be honest with yourself. Know what you do know and what you don't. Learn from others and develop tricks that work for you. Tell people up front your need to understand the task, the job, process, and procedures. Be open. Listen to feedback from people. Contain problems and identify permanent fixes. And finally, create best practice that are, that are standardized, documented, and implemented. Thank you. That was the Humanity Leadership Podcast. My name is David Wheatley. For further information about Humanity, go to humanity.com. Or check out our latest book, What Great Teams Do Great, from all good bookstores. Have a good one. Stay healthy. Mm -hmm.